Right, okay, start. Okay, so today we'll talk about the financial accounting, which is this module. And tomorrow we'll need both for the property management. Okay, okay. So once you log in the system, and this is the financial accounting. Okay, so we go inside. Right, so this is a financial calling on you and okay sorry before we start if you have any questions if let's say for long questions you may drop down in your notepad first and later on you can forward to me okay so this is our email address on right there All right, so that's the that's my email address. Okay, so if you have any questions for long questions, okay, you drop down in your notepad and you may forward to this email address. Okay, I will answer it every email and every question. Okay, what's that? Okay, right. Right, so uh, basically is uh, nothing special in the financial accounting. Okay, so it's just something like key in the credit invoice, make the payment voucher, and generate your money report. Okay, but before we're doing these things, let's say for the new project, uh, for the new project, okay, for the new project, they have the opening balance to bring in. Okay, so before that, we have to complete the chart of account. Okay, complete the chart of account. Okay, so the first thing is we need to go to the setup. And, and I'm sorry, that's a financial year. Okay, we set up the financial year first. All right, so this financial year actually is not, uh, not really critical. So you can always edit the period according your that management according to your management the financial year period okay you can put a half year you can put a one year you can put a 15 months it doesn't matter okay okay so the important is from the month begin and end of the month okay you can't put it as something like on oh, no, right, try okay you can't put it as maybe i just need to until 22nd of september so system is not allowed okay so make sure the period end is the ending period, okay? And this description is for your own user reference. Huh? So make sure you put some understanding wording over there. And this option will later on will show in the uh, like the financial report, the balance sheets and the management fund statement and those, huh? those are the financial report. Okay. Okay, so how we add the financial year. So we just press the add button. All right, press the add button and let's say you have never add anything there so the period begin and the period end is blank okay everything is blank okay so you need to put in your financial uh, sorry put in your management financial year period so let's say it is uh, uh let's say okay this is until september okay add one more for october 2021 and 31st december 2021 Right, so this is what is it? Uh, okay, so for example, this is the description. So <clears throat> I write this description, then I will let, I will let my user know uh, this is the description up to December 2021. Okay, that's it only. It's nothing critical over here. Okay, so just set. Okay, that's it. That's all only. So if you have the period, if you have the financial year period in uh, setting there, uh, it means in over here. Okay, so for the next year or maybe the next financial year you want to add, system will automatically insert for you for one year, mm -hmm. of course. Okay, system will automatically preset the one year period for you. So if there's any changes, so just change the things. Okay, change the month only. Uh, I'm sorry, just change the date and Maybe the descriptions you need to change a bit. Okay, so that's all I need. And set. Okay, so if you create it wrongly, so no problem. Just select, delete. Okay, 
So it doesn't matter. This financial year is not affecting anything. Okay, this will not affect. Uh, sorry, this will not affect any of your financial uh the transitions or anything. Okay, so so it's not critical unless let's say okay in year two thousand nineteen you have audited. Okay, your account is audited. So maybe you need to lock your account to prevent someone go and edit the backdated transactions or uh, just go and play around the previous year financial. Okay, so to prevent some of the user doing that, so we have a function over here, accounts audited. Okay, so you come over here, you come to the financial year function, you select the period month. So this is 2019, and I click the accounts audited. All right, so account audited. So once the account audit is confirmed, system will not allow to amend to the audited financial year account. So which means, let's say the account has been audited on 1st March 2020. Okay, so I put confirm. So once I press confirm, this date will tag into over here, account audited. And this period, the transaction within this period from January, sorry, the transition from 1st January 2019 until end of the December 31st, uh, 31st December. So that transition is not allowed to edit anymore. Okay, so remember, so if you want to have uh, something like lock your financial period for audited account, so you come to the financial year, select the period. Okay, select the period, click accounts audited, and put in the date to lock this financial year. Okay, so that's your need. Okay, so if someone accidentally has maybe just play, play on this function, they actually didn't, they haven't audited, but they just go and lock already, so it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. You can send an email to the technician and we will assist you to remove the audited date. Okay, then the system will open back the access for this financial year. Okay. All right. So I think the financial year have not much questions. Okay. So just basically just press the add button, put in your financial year period, the begin and the end, the descriptions, and set. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it. Only. Okay. So delete this and okay, this one remain there. Okay. So that's it. This is the first step. We need to set up the financial year. Ah, yeah, one thing need to remind you. So if some of the project that have problem to load the uh, like the financial year statements, uh, sorry, the financial statement like the balance sheets or the mention fund statement. So uh, if they have nothing, if the period month show you nothing, okay, if the period period month show you nothing or they didn't show the period that you need. So it's because the financial year haven't set up. Okay, so make sure you set up the financial year. Then system only able to get you the reports, right? Okay, so that's it. This is for the financial year. All right. So the next thing is chart of accounts. Okay, chart of accounts. So this is the uh, I think is the uh, most complicated part in the financial accounting. Okay, so because this is this chart of accounts is uh is uh is something like the is the is the main things in the financial accounting. So without this chart of account number, without this uh, I mean without those without this account number, so basically you can't do any transitions. Okay, so this is the most complicated part. Okay. All right. So our chart of accounts, we have nine categories over here. So. At the top there, you will see assets, liabilities, capital, incomes, cost of sales, and so on, so on the operation. So each category, they carry one number at the header. So which means assets, you will see assets account number will always start from one. Okay, all the assets account will always start from one. Okay, and of course, liabilities will start from two. Okay, two. And, and so on. So income will be four, 
and this is a five. Expenses will be six. Okay, so this is the uh, way. Also, this is also the way we can understand this account number is belong to what category. So let's say you're entering some transaction in the journal entry and you saw the account number is six, start from six. So you will know, ah, this is the expenses item, right? So okay, that's it. This is the first thing. All right, second things. Uh, uh, basically, you basically when the project set up, uh, when we hand over the project, so there's some default account number has been set up already. So, uh, basically there's default uh, There's a standard default account number there. So you can continue to use the our standard, or you can go and something like edit uh, or edit or remove or add on some, some new transition or maybe the new account number over here. Okay, so it doesn't matter, it's up to you to design, right? So uh, I believe uh, every project, they will start from something like this, bank ABC and bank XYZ. Okay, so uh, you have to change the account number, change the bank and put the account number. Okay, so you're using public bank, then maybe you put the public bank, the full account number over here, and seeking fund the bank account number over here. Okay, if you have another bank, so you can add on in the assets. All right, so okay, now come to the case. We have a new bank, so we need to create a bank in the child account here in order to proceed some transitions. Okay, all right, so in the account number in the child account, you see some of the account number, it, some of the account name or account number is in the green color, blue color, it depends on the screen. Okay, in the, in the different color, it's not a black color wording. Okay, so this is the account header. Okay, account header. This number or the name with the colors is account header. So we make it simple. So this is something like a folder. Okay, so this is a folder and this is their files. Okay, do this is the two files in this folder and this folder is under this folder also. Okay, so you can you can <clears throat> you can understand in this way. Okay, so this is the folder, this is a folder, and these are the files. Okay. Okay, these are the files. Right. So we need to add a new bank account number. So we will look for the cash and bank folder. So let's say the bank cash and bank header. Okay, we make it correct. Okay. Cash and bank balance. Okay, all the bank accounts or petty cash account is under this header. All right. So what I'm going to do is this has used up to four. Okay, so I just copy this number. Okay, I copy this number and I go back to top. I press the add. All right. So. When you press the add button, system will depend on the category and help you to insert the first digit, the first number. Okay, so it is so that's impossible that you want to add the liabilities account into the assets that so you can't change. Okay, you can't change. What you can do is put the put the number behind only. Okay, so just now the number is up to four. So I copy the number. Okay, I go back to the top. Account number I paste and this I change to five. Okay, so I put to five and account name. So let's say uh bank ABC, bank ABC. Okay, of course there's a I think there's a, some singing one bank. Okay, so I just copy paste. Huh? So you need to make it so difficult. Okay, let's say okay, this is the bank account number and this is for. Sinking fund. Okay. okay, this is for sinking fund. Okay, this is the account name. This is the account number. Okay, we don't take this because this is not the header. This is the actual item I'm going to use. Okay, all right. So, account filter. We have six filter over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six filter over here. Okay, this account filter can help you to prevent some user typo error or use some, some human mistake okay 
Okay, this account filter will help you to filter out this account should be showing in which functions. Okay, so let's say this is the bank account number. Okay, so when we talk about the bank account number, so it should supposed to show in the something like the bank selection over there. Like make, like we're making the payment voucher or the, doing the official receipt. Okay, so this should be inside the bank category there. Okay, so account filter we will select cash and bank. Okay, we will select cash and bank. So this will not going to select able to select in your expenses item or anywhere. Okay, so they will always appear in your bank selection there. Okay, later on you will understand what I'm talking about on this account filter. Okay, so as long as you put the correct filter for your new account number, then they will help you a lot. Okay. So debtor names no need. This is the main. We don't need debtor names. All right. So this is the way we create a new account number. We put the account number. We put the account name, and we put the account filter, and save. Okay, so this is the way we add the new account number, the bank account number. Okay, so the next, lovely this. Okay, this is the place we add in our creditor, our supplier. Okay, so by default, we already have a one account header is called operations creditors. Okay, so you can continue to use this or maybe you have some at once uh, on the child account there, have some requirement on the child account there. So you need to come, uh, you need to redesign your child account and put accordingly. Lo. Okay, so from our send, uh, from our sample is operation creditors and there's a lot of the creditors has been added on. Okay, so I'm going to add in a new supplier. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We look for the operation creditor. We look for the last number. So which means the 16. I copy. Okay, I copy the number. Go back to the top. Press the add button. Alright, so the first digit system default for you. And put the account number. And this I change to 17. Okay, then I put the credit name over there. So let's see what's the name we can put. Alright, so for example, this is the, our credit name, our new supplier. Okay, I put the supplier name and account filter. Creditor. Okay, this is our creditor. Okay. Which means we're telling the system this is a creditor and this account, this account, this CSS trending, this supplier will only appear in my creditor selection there. Okay, so when we select creditor, then we can register creditor details for this account. Okay, so let me copy this number, I'll copy this name. Okay, copy this name. All right, so now I'm going to add in the company info for my supplier. Okay, credit name. I press the add. Okay, the add button over here. Add name. So I put the company name. And of course, if you have so a lot of the details there, you can put in the details. Okay, doesn't matter. So this is a company and email. So if you have any email, you can put on and telephone number and the company fax number. Okay, and this is the address. Okay, address. Okay, just some number there. Okay, and those other additional info. So as long as you key the system, then our system can get to you. Okay, so once everything is done, press save button. All right, so we haven't done yet. We just save the contact only. So the creditor names, creditor name, we have to point to the contact. Okay, make sure you point to the contact, otherwise it still print nothing to you. 
Okay, they will just only print the account name for you only. So there's no, we now any address or telephone details over there. Okay, so make sure you add the new creditor name. Make sure you point to the creditor name. Okay, over here. Okay, make sure you point to the creditor name and only press the save button. Okay, so that's it. This is how the how we add on the new creditors. Okay, this is how we add on the new creditors. All right, so now, so let me show you. Okay, the next thing, incomes. Okay, incomes. Oh, sorry, one second. All right, still recording. Okay, so incomes. So this is all the income account. So uh, one thing we have a difference from, I think difference from other accounting system is the sinking fund we parked under the incomes category there. Okay, okay. but never mind. It's not a big deal because our system, our reports will do all the things for you already. So you don't need to something like journal transfer this and transfer that only. Okay, so we don't need to do anything of that. Okay, all we need to do is we set up the account, everything is correctly, then we assist our system will do it for you. All right, so incomes. So let's say there's, um, uh, let me see what we can add. Okay, so we add, we add on some new sinking fund expenses. Uh. Oh, sorry, sinking fund account. Okay, sinking. All right, so we go and press the add. Okay, so the same step. We look for the number. Copy, <coughs> copy the number. Okay, paste the number. We change the number. All right, so this is the next, the, our new account leader. So, account name. Uh, uh, maybe we put just some sample pen, pending fee collection. All right, so just for example, we we'll put this. Okay, account filter. This is the income. So of course, the income, we will talk about the sales. Huh? We're selling something and this is the income. Okay, so incomes, we put sales. All right, manage fund. There's one option here, manage fund. So you have to select either this is the operation fund or sinking fund. So we are doing for the sinking fund things. So make sure you do a sinking fund. Set. Okay, that's it. So try to avoid some funny things like you adding you adding the sinking funds, adding the sinking funds item under the operation fund credit. Or I mean the operation operation fund category over here. Okay, so later on the report will show you some funny things. Okay, so this is how we add in the incomes account. Okay, expenses. So basically it's the same thing. So we just press the add, put the account number, put the account name, and account filter will be purchase. Okay, because we are going to purchase something. So it's our expenses. Okay, so make sure the account filter is purchase. Okay, and management. Make sure you tell the system this is uh, belong to the operation fund expenses or the sinking fund expenses. Okay, so both those like the salary, event cost, or the bonus, or any of the cleaning, the money cleaning fees is all belong to the operation. No? So I think there was something like the wall pending is belong to where is my sinking fund? Okay, sinking fund. So, so I believe all the building works is under the sinking funds. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so that's it. Put the account number, put the account name, account filter, put purchase if there's a sales. Huh? Okay, purchase. And this is sinking fund or operation fund. Alright, that's it. And set. Okay, so how about you? Maybe you will ask, how about a wrongly created account? Okay, 
Okay, a wrongly created the account. So for example, this is the one that I, just, I created just now. So I select the pending fee collection. This is just now what I create. Okay, I'm wrongly created. Okay, yes, yeah, suppose we don't have this income account. Okay, so we can delete. Okay, you will see a delete button over here. Okay, so if the delete button there allow you to click, which means there is no transitions. Okay, no transition for this account. No any transition tag with this account. Okay, okay, so again, if you can press the edit button, if you're allowed to press the edit button, oh, sorry, the delete button, which means there's no transition has tagged to this account. No transition is using this account number. Okay, so otherwise your ID may not have the access to the delete function. Okay, but for the supervisor level or the I think the account manager level, minimal account manager level, they already have the delete access. Okay. All right. So if that is the if wrongly created, so if you need to do some correction on the wording. Okay, let's say it maybe the spelling wrong. Okay, so I should not put the collection word over there. Okay, so it's the same criteria. If there is no transitions using this account number or tag with this account number, so the edit button, you can change the account name. Even you can change the account name and the collect uh, and the description. Okay, so I throw away the collection. Save. Okay, so that's it. So you can edit or delete the transition as long as there is no any transition using this account number. Okay, so if the account number has been used, for example, recharge, you will see the delete button is not, not unable to click. Okay, and even you press the edit, you cannot change anything. Okay, you can't change anything. But only this account filter or this. Okay, so that's it. That's all only. Okay, so this is for our, this is all about our child accounts. Okay, this is how we add, how we delete, how we edit the account number, <coughs> the account name, uh, sorry, the account number. Okay, so if you want to print out the listing, we have the print button over here, so you can print out for your own record. Lah. Okay. All right, so you will see there's a display level over here. Okay, display level and the filter code. So basically, it's uh, nothing big deals over here. So it's, uh, it's for your presentation, a presentation proposal. Okay, display level seven. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is uh, something like a filter, like you want, what you want to view on your child account over here. Okay, so we, as we told you, <coughs> uh, maybe we put back the, okay, assets. Okay, in the assets. So let's make it simple. So the you will see the account number, there's a level over here. So this is the level one, level two, and level three. So we allow add up to seven level because we have seven digit over here. Okay, so our child account is seven digit, and of course you can add up to seven level. Okay, which means you can keep add on the account header like under this current asset, there's another there's an office finishing things and under this under this account number there's also another header and this also have another header so you can keep going add on as long as you manage very well on this you can keep you can play around the child account okay so this display level is just to make it simplify your uh, something like the simplified viewing purpose uh. Okay, so now let's say I want to see all the account level one and level two only, maybe which means I want to see up to level two only the account, the account number. 
So I change to two. Okay, so you see the account number will show up to two levels. Third level is missing. Ah, this is the second level. So if you want to view the third level, you just change to third level. Okay, then we'll open that for you. So if you have another level, just keep open, open. But uh, usually we're not using this up because we need to view all the account number. So we just maintain on display level seven. Now. Okay, we need to view everything. All right, filter code. Basically, this is the something like help you to <laughs> something like fill out the account number only. So it's not really uh, it's not really very critical functions over here. So for example, video one. So the one, oh, nothing. Okay, so uh, basically it's just from this, I think, put the account number and put this account number. Uh, yep, so it's not really useful. Uh. Okay, it's not really useful. So it doesn't matter. We just maintain every setting over here. We, what, we, what we can do in the chart of code is we add, we edit, we delete. That's all we need. Okay, so this is our chart of accounts. Okay, this is our chart of accounts. Okay, all right. So the the rest of the things we will we will talk about one by one now. Okay, but I was going to teach you the some the, some basic things first now. Right. So just now we have learned about the financial year and we are have understand the chart accounts, the designs and how to do the chart accounts, how to create a new credit account, how to add in the new expenses account and the, or maybe the incomes accounts. Okay. Okay, once everything is set up. And we are ready to start our transitions now. All right. So for the new project, so usually they have the opening balance to bring forward. Okay, the opening balance bring forward. So uh the opening balance will key in under the using the sorry, using the journal entry to pass in. Okay, we have no fun, we have no something like a simple function to let you put in the opening balance but we are using the journal entry. Okay, journal entry. So this is the transition screen, All right? So what we do is press the add button. Okay, all the function keys over this side, okay? All the screens is similar. There's an add, there's a save, edit, delete, cancel, print, and others. Okay, basically all the interface is almost the same. Okay, there's a form and there's a list. Okay, and this is a function name. And if you want to search the document number, you can search over here, that document number, right? So now we're going to add in the transitions using the journey entry. Okay, let's say I'm going, I'm going to key in the opening balance. Okay, so usually we will advise our user, our customer to get the financial opening balance uh, in the trial balance format. Okay, in a trial balance format. So we explain there's a debit and credit in the, in the report there. Okay, and you will need to use the journal entry, key in, enter the opening balance according to your trial balance. Okay, so let's say your first item is maybe bank and it's showing in credit. Okay, so now I'm going to try something. Uh, April, so let's say April is my Opening balance date, I mean the report, the trial balance report. Okay, the, my financial trial balance report as at 30th April. So I have put, have to put 30th April. Okay, so those are the dates I leave it first. Okay, we we'll go for the symbol one. So date account, we we'll put the 30th April and department, no need. Maybe some of you yes, have only one department, so I think you don't need to enter unless your report has specific, uh, sorry, unless your project has some few blocks like block A, block B, block C to select, okay, and your report has specific, this figure is for block A, this figure is for block B, 
then you have to put in the department. Uh. Otherwise, just ignore it, doesn't matter. All right, so account number. So let's say my first item is the bank. So I search my bank account. So for example, this is the bank account. And okay, it's showing debit. So debit 900. Oh, okay, 900. And credit automatic put zero. So if you put in the credit 900, it will automatically put zero in debit. Okay, so it's not, uh, it doesn't matter, just leave it. Okay, so I put debit 900 and the descriptions. Okay, so this is the descriptions, right? And reference number, if you have the reference number, you can put it. Okay, then you press the add item. All right, add item. System will save the entry and add on another row for you. Okay, you can see second row, second item. Okay, when you press add button, the entry just now will automatically save as number one and number two will automatically add for you. Okay, so the same date and account name. So let's say, okay, this is debit and credit to where? Uh, let's say, okay, so we charge. Okay, credit to so charge. For example, this put the descriptions and this is credit number. Okay, and I keep going add on the new item according to your trial balance. Okay. So I keep all the things already. And make sure before you save, make sure there's no any blank row at last at the bottom there. I mean the, the blank row at the last. Okay, if there's a bank row, click the delete only. Click the delete button. Okay, so make sure your debit and credit is tally. Okay, our system will help you to calculate, so don't worry. So if there's some difference, uh, of course, there's a, it will show you the things. Uh. Okay, 900 and 901. Okay, so if the figure is different, you are unable to set. Okay, debit amount and credit amount is not tally. Okay, so put back the correct figure. Save. All right, so it's tally now. Okay, and we press save. Okay, so this is how we enter the opening balance and also we pass journal for the adjustment okay all right so this is how we add how we how the way we add the button all right so there's some there's some additional function in the journal entry okay let me show you okay add okay we put back the same date all right, so uh, this one we still choose the bank. Okay, the bank. Okay, there's a lock account function over here. So how it works is, let's say you already know what is the double entry you're going to use. Okay, let's say this is the uh, debit to the bank and credit to some someone, some else, the account number. Okay, so I put the account number. Okay, I put the account number. This is double entry account. Huh? Okay, system will automatically set the amount to this double entry, this two double entry account. Okay, so let's say this is the this is a debit bank. Okay, I put the debit amount over here. Put debit amount. And okay, doesn't matter. Put there. Okay, when I press the app or, or the save, system will automatically help me to insert the double entry. Just now for the just now the how we add the, the the opening balance we need to add in one by one okay which means we add this account number and we need to press the add item and key in the credit amount or the debit amount to contract it uh, means uh, make it daily okay but with the lock accounts so you can press the save and system will have you automatically insert the double entry for you. Okay, so how you insert 
So I guess this is not really useful in the in the in, in our life practical, uh, but uh, as part of our features, uh, help you to automatically insert the double entry. Okay, so this is the bit. So let's say if you put credit and reset. Oh, sorry. Which I should press the I should press the add item. Okay, so let's say okay credit. 800 and I press the add. Okay, why is this? We put back to David. Save. Add. Okay, so we continue add on another items. And let's say this is a credit. Oh, okay, credit 800 and save. So and then another double entry capability insert. Okay, so it's just some some uh, extra features for you guys to to help you to make it faster for the data entry work. Okay, this is the block account, and we have the get recurrence. Okay, so get recurrence means uh, something like template. Uh, you save the transition as a template and use for every month or every time you're going to key in the same transition. Okay, so let me show you how to use. Uh, let's say, let me find some transactions. All right, this is it, unknown deposit. So I believe every month there's the unknown deposit to key in. Okay, but maybe sometimes it's not the accounting doing the job, it's the it's a normal user doing the job. Are you doing the job? They need to enter the certain entry. So you are worried about they have entered the wrong account number. So your then your bank account or some of the financial statement go here while you okay, doesn't matter. We have the get recurrence. So what you need to do is we save this as a template. So every time you ask your user to do the unknown deposit, you just ask them to click on the get recurrence and let's template over there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use it. All right, so this is the sample transition, unknown deposit. Okay, I'm copy, maybe I copy this name. Okay, I press the F button. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, cancel first. Make sure you have opened that document that you wish to save as a template. Okay, make sure you open the document and only press the add button. Okay, this is the one I need to save as a template. So I open this and I press the add button. Okay, so recurrence name. So of course I need to keep in the name. So this is unknown deposit and check. Well, oh, maybe I'll put more detail on the deposit and maybe. MBB Operation Bank. MBB Operation. Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Operate. Okay, that's it. And save. Okay, that's it. That's all. Okay. So every time your user come in, so let's say, okay, your user come into the donor entry, they want to do the, I mean, they lost it. So they need to add again. Oh, sorry, need to add again. So I press add. And they don't need to choose the account number. What they need to do is go to get recurrence, select the template, undo deposit. And of course, they need to put in the date. Okay, they need to put in the date. And the date is, I uh, suppose, is, uh, let's, say, let's say 15 of May. Okay, 15 of May. And next. So you will see the system will automatically help you to insert the account number. What you also need to do is just modify the amount only. So let's say 15 of May, the amount they will say 100. Okay, this is the bank that be 100 and the unknown they will say 100 and save. Okay, make sure this is save item. Huh? Okay, just now I press the save item and make sure the user has pressed the save button on the top there. Okay, this is a safe document. This is a safe item. Okay, these are the item and we save the item if we modify something. Okay, so let's say this. I 
put some number over there. Okay, <clears throat> make sure I save. And there are only record over here. Okay, let me throw away on this. Ah, oh, that was it. Okay, save. Okay, we make it correct. Okay, make sure you press the save button on the top there and the system only save this data entry. Save the document. Okay, save. That's it. That's all you need to do about for your unknown deposit. Okay. So basically, journal entry is for adjustment purpose and to enter the unknown deposit. Okay. So just press the add button, key the transactions, save. Okay. That's all you need. All right. So this is all about journal entry. Okay. Let's go to the next. Audit trail. All right. Audit trail. So audit trail is something like another kind of the listing report. So nothing to do with this. So you can press any options or query, go and search whatever that you need. Okay, so uh, basically we did basically we were not using this. Huh? Okay, what we use is the GL listing, general ledger listing. What we so called the GL listing. Huh? Okay, GL listing. All right. And GL listing, so uh, basically also for viewing purpose. Lah. So you select your account name, I mean your account number, lah. your account number or your account name. So let's say it's a photo copy service. You want to see any transition overhead over there. So there's a brought forward 10. So maybe you put more earlier date to see what is the transition. Okay, I change the date. And I will see, ah, there's a much official receipt. Income, look, this, one, this is the income. This is the expenses item. So, this is the official receipt number because that's not from the OR, official receipt. And this is the document number. So, if you want to know the details, so official receipt 15. Okay, you copy this number. Okay, let's say you want to know the details. Okay, I copy this number. Then go to cash book, search the official receipt. Okay, search the official receipt. Oh, sorry. Uh, never mind. Login again. So for sorry for just now the error. So we are in the progress to fixing it so i think the programming program team has already fixed that so it just depends on the updates huh? but never mind so if really someone need to search something and hit error okay so it's not a big deal you press the up button okay they will automatically go to the last document number then change the number that's all only that's the matter okay you can go to the previous document number and change the document number you still can search it okay so there's no problem on the on your transitions it's just something like the browser session we didn't control on that so that's why it caused the error okay but this is only happened on the first time lah. okay so for second time onwards you can direct search the document number now okay it's only happened on the first time okay our team is already working on that so no worry on that okay so we, when we want to look for the details, so we just search the document number and this is how the details. Okay, so we will see uh, the account is going to the petty cash and photocopy service. So we will know the double entry is credit photocopy and debit to petty cash. Okay, account name, item name. Okay, all right. So, okay, we later talk more about this. Okay, let's go back to general ledger listing. Okay, so we'll just select anyone. Oh, okay, no transactions. Oh, there you go. All right, so let's say you want to print the general ledger listing. There's a print button over here. Okay, we we'll press the print. Okay, so this is uh, some 
uh, just some the alert message. So it doesn't matter, just ignore. Okay, this is the account I'm going to print. Next. And I select the format. Lah. So if you want to export, then make sure you select this format to export. Lah. So if you just want for a normal printing, so we can select the standard and print report. All right, so this is our GL listing. Lah. Okay, so basically just select account number and print. Okay. All right, GL trash. So uh, as the name, lah, it's the trash dustbin. Okay, so you will notice we have a delete button in the financial accounting. Okay, so the delete button, delete button is, will happen in the, will appear in the journal entry, official receipts, credit invoice, payment voucher, basically all the document function, they will have a delete function. Okay. This delete button we will only do in the financial accounting module. Property management will have no delete button. So every cancel or mistake, so have to go through the CNDN or account reversal to avoid the transactions. Okay. But journal entry, we have specially designed for this delete button. Okay. But one thing you need to know is this delete button is not really delete from the system. Okay, it's just delete from your GL only. Okay, they delete from GL and put into your trash. Okay, so let's say this is the wrong entry. JV37. Okay, JV37 is my wrong entry. I want to delete it. Okay, so I delete. Okay. Okay, so 37 will no longer in my GL now. I can't view the document now. Okay, but I can restore it in the GL trash if I accidentally delete. Let's say. So go to 37. Okay, so this is the document. And what I need to do is I press the restore. Okay, I press the restore. And turn the entry, they will come back. 37. Okay, if some of the document number not found, you, you can find, you can try have a look in the GL trash. Maybe someone else is, has deleted the document. Okay, but I believe some, I believe your site will practice doing the journal to convert it off instead of the delete button. Okay, but why anyway, we just have having here for your own convenience. Lah. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, for the document number part. So if the document has been deleted, you can't use back the document number. So which means, let's say, okay, 37, I delete, okay, and I press the add, uh, add button again, they will go to 37. I'm not able to use back the 37. Okay, so this is also our protection, so we need to protect the transition as well. We can't something like make it something like same document number, having the different entry, different accounts, right? So you can't use back the account number unless, Okay, unless, okay, let me restore. Okay, I restore already. Okay, I go back to journal entry. Okay, unless if you want to use back the account number, but this is the wrong entry. So what you need to do is just edit, change everything only. Okay, if you need to use back the account number, uh, sorry, if you need to use back the document number, the only way to do is you need to edit the document. Okay. You cannot say you delete this or maybe you control of this and then you need to add another same document number for new transition. So our system is not allowed to do that. Okay. That's it. This is for our journal entry and general ledger listing. And of course our GL trash. Okay. GL trash will keep all the deleted document over here. Okay. All right. The next. Document query. 
So basically, this is the search function. Okay, so this this page is actually similar to the list page. Okay, the list page for for example, okay, journal entry. There's a list. Okay, on the top right, there's a list over here. Okay, I go to list and you will see it's similar screen. Okay, the only difference is the list in the function, in the document function, let's say the list in the journal entry, this query will only search for the query, the journal entry only. Okay, let's say you open the list in the payment voucher, that query will only search for the payment voucher only. Okay, this is the difference. Okay. Document query. So they will check everything. They will go and find everything regardless what is the function. Okay. I don't care is a journal entry or journal entry or paper washer or official sheet or maybe credit invoice. Okay, as long as I put the document number there, I will search from overall. I will search, I will search everything in the financial. Okay, let me show some sample. Okay, document query. Let's say okay, query. Document number. I have the document number, but I don't know what is the transition. So let's say I put this. Okay, number one. This is number one transition. And I press the picking query. So system will go into search all the number one for me. Okay, system will go and search all the number one for me. Okay, so this contra you can ignore. This is for our system views, so you can ignore this. So what you what you need to know is the details only, right? Okay, the account, the account amount, the reference number, and of course the important is document number. Okay, what kind, what is the document number you're trying to search? Okay, so let's say if you want to search all the PV, okay, but matter document number PV, right? All the PV will come out, okay. But of course, you you're not necessary not necessary doing over here. You can do in the payment voucher or the account payable there payment voucher. Okay, let's say you want to find particular PV in uh, in the certain functions, uh, unless you want to say unless you say you want to have a list of the, all the PV in your financial accounting, then you can go for this document document query. All right. Right, so then you can go to print, print out the listing. Okay, so that's all for our general ledger. This is the general ledger function, so general ledger. Okay, over here, general ledger, there's a some function over here. Okay, general, general, general entry, geo listing, geo trash, document queue. Okay, that's all. All right, next function, cash book. All right, so cash book, there's an official receipt, payment voucher. Okay, these four functions uh, cash and bank control and the bank reconciliation. All right, so official receipt in your cash book. So, uh, one thing I have to remind you if the official receipt you're going to enter is for your owner. So make sure you do in the property management. Never do in the cash book. Never do in the financial accounting. Okay. Always remember property management transactions. Do in the property management. Don't do in the financial. Okay. Otherwise, your report will not tally, and of course, the owner statement will not present these transactions. All right. So remember. Owners transitions or the property management transition always do in the property management. Okay, maybe make it simple. The owners transitions always do in the property management. Okay, unless there's some visitors, okay, some outsiders, then you need doing the financial accounting. Okay, so come over. Okay, back to this official receipt. Usually we will use this official receipt when uh when it's for the visitor car. The car will claim. 
Okay, the car will unlock this. Okay, usually lah, this is all the visitor things. Okay, so let me show you how to use it. Okay, so we we'll go to operation receipts. So okay, we press the add button. Put in the date. So put in the date. And if you have a manual receipt number, you can put in the manual receipt number. Lah. Okay, otherwise you can ignore. Alright, account name. So you will see it's only appear the bank account only. Okay, we will only appear the bank account only. So this is the function from the account filter. If you remember in the chart of account, every time we set up a new account number, you have to set up the account filter. Okay, let me repeat a bit. Okay, chart of accounts. So every of the account number, we must set up the account filter. What kind of transition is this? Okay, so for the bank accounts, all the bank or cash bank accounts, we have set cash and bank only. So which means this cash and bank accounts will only appear in my the account there, which means uh, it's uh, something related to your bank or money things. Uh, okay, so they will only showing here. So to make it uh something to prevent some sort of the human error. Uh, so if some user they without the accounting knowledge, then maybe they simply go and select any account number and put any account number, put the amount. And set okay, so that will cause some problem to the accountants. Uh. Okay, so we help you to prevent this already. So if someone else still keep the wrong transition, then uh, no choice. Uh. You still have to do the correction. Uh. Okay. All right. So okay, this is uh okay maybe bank operation. Okay, the money will go into this bank. Is a check or oh, doesn't matter. I maybe pay by cash. Uh. So if check, then of course you need to key the check number. Uh. So since it's cash, then put cash. Uh. Department code, don't need if you only have one department. Payer, who going to pay the money? Who is paying you the money? Okay, so let's say it's the visitor. Okay, uh, if there's no record over here, you can press the add party. Uh. Okay, then you key in the information, uh, but usually maybe we just put the carplate number or maybe the, the owner name and the, with the carplate number. Uh, if we unlock the car wheel, car wheel lock. Okay, car clamp. Okay, never mind, I use back the old record. Okay, this is the guys and payment for wheel unlock. Okay, due to illegal parking. And we look for the income account. So this is our camping. All right, so this will showing all the income account only. Okay. It's not, not really. This will show all the income account and the liabilities asset. Hmm, expenses is showing. Okay, doesn't matter. This officially is inside. I have a few down that, but never mind. Account name they have, or they have every few down. I think some of the entry maybe they need to pay for the expenses account there. Okay, so it doesn't matter. So as long as the user select the correct account, then put in the amount. <coughs> okay, and bring it and save. All right, that's it. This is how we key in the official result for creditor okay so if you want to print then just go for the print button okay if you have any format so we only have one standard include company header print document all right so this is our standard format okay that's it Right. Okay. So this is how we do the official receipt, and same to the payment voucher.
<clears throat> same to the payment voucher, it looks, it looks similar. Okay, it's the same thing. So we just press the add button. And this is going to which bank account? I mean, uh, which bank account paying the money? Lah. Okay, which bank account payment the money is by check, cash, or anything. And of course, put the things. Let's say 7 Eleven. I'm buying some tools. Lah. Triple air battery. Okay, triple air battery. And put the amount, narrow gate, and set. Oh, check number. Oh, because I'm paying the check. Uh, maybe cash uh, out from the credit cash. Set. All right, that's it. So this is how we gain a payment voucher. Lah. So this payment voucher is something like for the reinvestment or the or some small money payment. Lah. Okay, going to something else. Okay, so. Do not use this payment voucher to add for your creditor. Okay, remember, do not use this cash book. Do not use this cash book payment voucher for your creditor's payment. Because you have registered your creditor account. So, you, of course, you need to register. Uh, sorry, you need to key in the creditor invoice. Then only make the payment voucher. Okay. This payment voucher doesn't have any thing related to your credit invoice because there's no allocation, there's no details that you took in. And of course, the important thing is you can't get the aging correct. Okay. All right. So remember, lah, don't key in your credit in, uh, don't key in your credit payments over here. Okay. All right, next, cash and bank control. Okay, so cash and bank control basically is another kind of the listing report, but is for your bank accounts only, bank and cash and bank accounts only. Okay, and you can select which one you want to look for it. Okay, so basically it's for, I think it's for the checking purpose, for the accountant checking purpose, because sometimes the accountant, they have no access to the property management or do a lot of things to get the, receipt, uh, get the listing. So this function will help them to simplify their work. So just select the month and then they will see what is the transaction of the bank account in the selected month. All right, that's all we need for viewing only. Print. There's a print button over here. All right. Okay. Bank reconciliation. This also is uh, one of the complicated part in our system because uh, not really complicated. It's just a first time setting. Have to do some, some a bit settings. Uh, okay. To make sure the bank reconciliation going smooth. Okay, so let's say uh, petty cash. Okay, let's say the petty cash account. Okay, petty cash account. So I assume this is the uh, one of our bank account. Okay, I just use this as a sample. Don't take it serious. Okay, this is our sample only. Okay, so I'm going to start the bank reconciliation. Okay, I'm going to start to do the bank reconciliation for this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is Select the bank account. Okay, select the bank account, and we need to add the bank statement. Okay, we need to add the bank's statement. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't need to add first. The first thing we need to do is option setting. We need to do some setting first to cut off the things or insert the opening balance for this bank reconciliation. Okay, so skip the bank statement first. We go to the option setting. Okay, option setting is only do for one time. It's a one time setting only. It's do for the first time only. So you don't need to come over here to modify every month. Otherwise, your I think you something happened in your bank account. Huh? Okay, so this is only for first time only and one time setup. You don't need to configure every time. Right, so come, let's see. Okay, edit. Okay, block transactions before what date. 
So let's say I'm going to do the bank statement for maybe the first time, the first time using the system, and I'm going to start using the bank recon for my April month. So block block all the transition before first April. Okay, block all the transition before first April because I'm going to start this bank recon on first April. All right, so I put first April. All right, the next thing, system opening balance. So follow the opening balance that's showing in your bank statement. Okay, it's a bank statement, not the jail balance. Huh? So remember, it's not the jail balance, it's your bank statement, the bank statement you receive from the bank. Okay, so put the figure there. So let's say 1002 and set. That's it only. So make sure you do this thing and go back. Okay, that's it. Okay, then we only add in the bank statement. So we put the bank, we click on the bank statement button over here on the right hand side, bank statement button. All right, and we press the app button. So statement begin is for April. I'm doing the April month. And statement end, I think it's the end of the April. Okay, it was April until the 30th April, and the statement balance follow your bank statement. Okay, bank statement, huh? okay, statement balance follow your bank statement. So let's say my ending figure is 900 as a 30th April. Okay, safe. All right, that's it. This is how we add the bank statement. Okay, we just add in the period only, and that's it. So your bank statement on your left hand side, you have the options for the April. So if you add on a few more months, so of course you will have the options for that few more months. Okay, we're doing for April now. So for example, uh, this is the, okay. Then what you need to do is edit and take wherever they have reconciled there are wherever the items have been consulted in your bank statement with the system okay just take wherever the item over here the first tick okay the left hand side tick box okay you take this and system will calculate this okay but if you take skip system will do nothing but will skip this transition to bring forward to next month okay so make sure you don't simply go and take skip for the transition otherwise your maybe next month bank statement I'm able to reconcile the items, especially those unprecedented check or the uncredited check. Okay, so don't take skip unless there's some cancellation. Okay, let's say there's a cancellation, like you pass it, you make a payment, payment voucher, and then you pass the JV to control it off, okay, to cancel the transition, then that transition you, you only take the skip. Okay. Okay, let's say uh, if that transition is never appear happen in your bank statement. Okay, but if your bank statement appear the amount, then you have to take the reconsult. Okay, this is the reconsult. This is skip. Okay, again, this is reconsult. This is skip. Skip will stop bring forward your transition. To next month. Okay, so that's it. So you take all the things and save. And system will help you to calculate the end figure compared to the bank balance and whatever you reconcile balance in whatever you take in the function there. So you see there's a two adjust. So if some figure amount showing here is not zero, which means something wrong in your bank record. Maybe you need to double check again the transactions or the amount, whether they keep the end the correct or not, or maybe some of the transition you haven't take in the bank account, especially especially the unidentified deposit. Okay. So let's try to make it daily. So this is uh thousand three hundred. Never mind. Thousand three. Okay. 
Okay, so let's try to make it daily. I put 1003. All right, so let's say if daily already to adjust zero, to adjust zero, and you will see this button will appear here, lock statement. Excuse me. All right, lock statement. This lock statement can prevent your bank record go haywire or any transaction modified by other user. Okay, this will help you to help you help you a lot. Okay, so make sure if you tally already, if you zero rise and you're going to close the account, make sure you lock that statement. Okay, if you didn't lock the statement. Someone go and unpause your transaction, modify the transaction, change the amount, and your bank account will be not tally again, untally again. Then you will hit it on that. Then you, you might need to recheck again all your transactions, do again your bank account to get it tally. <coughs> all right. So make sure you complete the statement, your zero, your zero rise, your max statement. You're going to close the account, click the lock button. Okay, so let's say touch wood, there is some um, amendments you need to do. Let's say uh, maybe wrong chat number or the wrong descriptions. Okay, you want to change the, you want to edit the item. So when, if the user, they open the document, they will say something like the BS lock. So let me show you this sample. This is the official receipt 16. Okay, so this is from the official receipt, cash book official receipt. <coughs> okay, when I search the document number, they will show BS lock, bank statement lock. So you can't edit. Okay, you cannot edit any transactions. Okay, so if really, if the user really need to edit, then you have to go back to the bank statement. Okay, over here, this bank statement, select the month, and we have the unlock statement button. So we just unlock it. <clears throat> That's it. So then we go back. So it's not locked anymore. And user then go back to adjust the transition. So maybe let's say the description wrong. Uh, put more description. Okay, so, all right, that's it. So in my bank reconciliation, okay, description updated, then lock again. Okay, that's it. <coughs> okay, so this is how you protect your, your accounting zone and your bank reconciliations. Okay. All right, so this is the normal procedure. You edit, press the edit button, you take the items and save. Okay, that's all. Only this is how you do the bank reconciliation. All right. So uh, let me try to unlock the things first. Uh, unlock. Oh, I need to put more figure over here. So let's say, okay, thousand four. Save. That's it. Right. So so you will see that to adjust. 100 ringgit. So of course, definitely there's something wrong. Lah. Okay, then finally I find out oh, the difference of the 100 ringgit is from my previous system, the uncredited things, or maybe the unpresented, unpresented things. Lah. So let's say, uh, I think the unpresented things will be happen frequent. Okay, so maybe I make it 1002. Okay, 1002. <coughs> so the difference, negative 100. So there is some awareness there. So, and then you realize the difference of the 100 is from the previous system, the unprecedented check. Okay. So let's say your system cut off until, okay, let's say the March. Okay. There's an unprecedented check you want to bring to our system, to our system system in the April month. Okay. So we don't do in the, JV because the JV already includes all the things unless you have break down it. Okay, unless you break down it. Okay, so if nothing, if you have didn't if you didn't break down the 
things. So we have another option for you, openings item. Okay, openings item, I go inside, I press add only. So let's say the, the last month unpresented check now is present on my April statement. Okay, the last month, the March unpresented item, March unpresented item appear in my April statement now. So let's say 15 April. And it's a check. Okay. Item description is for what? Oh, level nine. Just anything? Oh, I'll bring forward. And it's credit. Oh, sorry, 100. Save. Okay, once I add the item, I go back. So this item will appear in my bank reconciliation on this date. All right, so what we need to do is reconcile it. Okay, reconcile it and save. That's it. Yeah, zero already. <clears throat> I zero again. Okay, so this is how we enter the, enter the, what the unpresented brought forward from the previous system into our system. Okay, that's all only. Okay, all right. So uh, there is one additional function in the bank account is cash bank slip. Right, cash bank slip. Oh, let me try to find some other samples. This has been this has been locked. Any other else? Okay. Bro, much. Let me see. I have any this one transaction. Okay, so let's try. Okay, we do on the March and there's uh, some cash payment. Okay, so <clears throat> if cash payment, of course, there will something like in your petty cash. So then at the end of the day or end of the week, you're going to bank in the money into your management bank account. <clears throat> okay, so for example, what can we do? Okay, four thousand. This guy is paying cash in four thousand on that much. Okay, let's say that's a lot transition. Huh? I have, that's a lot transition. That's a lot of cash from different receipt. You're going to bank in at the end of the day. Okay, so your user, your staff, go and bank in the money, and they come back with the banking slip. Okay, they come back with the banking slip. Okay, so. You can base on the banking slip and you do the cash bank slip over here. Okay. Okay, we go to the cash bank slip. We press the add button. And let's say uh, the money is from third March. Okay, it's a third March transition. Okay, the transition is for third March. I do third March this one day only. And the staff is banking on third March, end of the day. All right, they're banking the 4,000 ringgit. So which means is this one. Okay, or uh, maybe I maybe I take maybe I take more. Okay, I take the on the top there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's okay. I take all the things off. Okay, so this is all the cash payment, cash receipt on the March. Right? This is all the cash receipt. I received the cash in third March. It's total 10k and 750. Okay, 10,750 ringgit. Okay, right. the staff they bank in such amount into the bank account and come back with the bank slip. Okay. And you already know the banking money is already is for this uh this much receipt. Uh, this all the receipt number. Okay, you already know it's for this all the recent number. All right now, I go to press the save. Okay, 
Okay, I, sorry, take all the things and save. Okay, make sure the amount is tally with your the deposit slip uh, that you receive from your staff. Okay, so it involves 13 receipt and this amount. Okay, so it's correct. All right, now we go back. I see. So what we present now, we go back to March and we look for this month's item. And you will see all the third March cash payment that I have taken in the cash bank slip. They have accumulated, they have consolidated into one item. Okay, they have grouped into one item now. Okay. <clears throat> so actually, this is also one of the uh, some simplified way to help you to say, uh, do the works quickly. Okay. So imagine if your property there is over thousand unit and half of half of the owner they are paying the cash. So which means one month you have at least five hundred receipt cash receipt to reconcile. So for the traditional way, maybe you will come up, you will generate a collection report from the property management and then cross check over here and now they take the reconcile. Okay, but that will going to take a lot of time. Okay, you need to compare this, compare the bank statement, and also, and also take from the bank record. Okay, they will take a lot of time. But with this function, if someone if really want to go very fast, the accountant every time they will receive the cash bank slip, so they can immediately compare the cash bank slip, I mean the deposit slip, right? they can compare the deposit, deposit slip amount compared with the collection report of the day or maybe the date range, then they will know, okay, this is correct. The staff has called banking the correct money into the bank for this or the official receipt. So the accountant that can just come over here, the bank reconciliation, the cash bank slip, go and take all the items. Okay, then you can take all the items on time. So when come to the end of the month, when the accountant doing the bank recon, so they have no need to go and take again for the receipt or the transaction. So imagine that's a 500. If you do every day, then of course they will simplify your works. But if you have only a few days to reconcile over 500 receipts, and maybe sometimes there's some problem, so they will consume a lot of time for that. Okay, so it's also one of the way to Simplify the bank recon processor. Okay, so it's uh, it's not compulsory functional. It doesn't matter use or not. It's up to the user. Uh, we have provide this convenient way for simplify your accounting work. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. This is for the cash bank slip. Right. So of course there there's some filter to help you to sort out the report. So let's say you want to arrange by date or you want to arrange by the reconcile or by number or anything okay I set it over here and it's descending or ascending order and filter you want to build the reconcile or not reconcile item and of course there's some more options to let you to filter out okay just now I select this one item then they will only select the March item come up so if I throw away this filter they will show me wherever the transaction that uh, I mean Spring forward from previous month. So as you see, 2019 December, this maybe for example, like this guy haven't the payment haven't in my bank yet, but I keep the receipt. So maybe you need to have a look. Uh. The accountant need to check on this transition. Is the transition not valid or what? Alright, so it's just some extra features for you. Okay, so items per page we have designed to fix on 50, 100, and 200. Okay, we can't make it to view all. Let's say you have uh, over thousands item, so we can't make it to view all. Otherwise, your browser will hang over there. Okay, so your maximum limit is two hundred. Okay, so once you complete the first page and you go for the second page uh, over here. Okay, second page and third page and the fourth, the last page. Okay, so just select the page number. And make sure you have checked these options uh, because we have some feedbacks from our user and sometimes they're doing a bank record 
have no idea why the connection suddenly they cut off already. So all their work is gone. Okay, so now we have this function over here now. Auto save when change the page. So if you complete the page one and you go to the page two to continue words, so the page one info will automatically save in our system. Okay. So this also will save the current life. Okay. So not doing the things again and again because of the, something like connection cut off or what. Right. So this is all about our bank reconciliation. Okay. All right. So uh, if any questions, just remember write down in the notepad and drop an email to uh, the support, uh, support .com. Okay. I will receive that. Okay. And I will answer each of the questions. Uh. Try my best to answer. <clears throat> One second. All right, so okay, the next is a financial statement. So they we skip first. This will go for the last part. All right, account receivable. So let's say if your management have some business with other parties, so they can key the sales invoice up. But of course, you need to register your debtor name. Okay, so basically the function is more more or less is the same. So you just press the add and select the debtor names and what is the income item yeah income item you won't able to see all the expense item over here so you will see all other income items <coughs> the account filter the account filter function is working right now okay so you know you won't able to select the income item oh, sorry you won't able to select the expenses item Okay, so just let the name, the account, put in the amount, and save. That's it. Then you can pass the sales invoice to, to the third party. No? I think not really, I think not much of the management will use the account receivable. No? This is the uh, account, this account receivable is for the management debtors. Okay, this account receivable is for management debtor and it's not for your owner. Okay, and of course the outstanding, the aging also according the in the account receivable only. Okay, so please don't expect to see all the owner aging over here. Okay, for all the reports regarding the property management, just go back to property management. Okay, this account aging is only show whatever the aging in account receivable module only. Okay, in the financial accounting. All right. So, uh, sales invoice, no? just now we, uh, for example, we create the sales invoice and the, the debtors coming to pay the money and we just key in the official receipt only. Okay, we just key in the official receipt only. So we just press add, select the debtor name who, who coming to pay the money and the money going to which bank account and put the amount and we click the account location. Okay, so let me try to create one sample invoice. So that is uh, this CC call and uh, rental. Okay, rental 900. Set. Okay, then you print out this invoice to uh, do this CC call. All right, then now when they come to make the payment, so go to official receipt, we add. So we make the payment on this date, and this is CC code, and account name is operation bank. It's paying by check. All right, amount so nine hundred. Account location. Okay, this account location function is telling the system this OR is paying for which invoice number. Okay, this OR is going to pay for this. Okay, then I select allocated nine hundred balance zero. Setter, then I click save. Right, that's all we need. This is how we key in the office, uh, key in the sales invoice and the official receipt for the payment. So if let's say that there's some amendment of the check in for 
or maybe wrong allocation. So you just go back to the select, uh, to go back to the particular office reset or the sales invoice. You edit and change the thing only. But one thing special over here is the allocation will automatically remove by system. Okay. Just have a look. We click the save and the allocation has has removed by the system. Okay. Allocation has reversed by the system. And we need to redo the allocation at the account allocation function. Okay, so over here, account allocation. Okay, official receipt. This is official number. I set down and I go to the account location. So this is the official number. Okay, then I select. Right, so a car location date. Make sure this is the date sent with your official receipt date. Okay, so if you don't know the official receipt date, you go back to the account location. Here is the date. So I just copy. Copy the date. Select. Put the date. Next. And select the item again. Save. That's all we need. So when check back the official receipt, so it's come back again. Then you can reprint your receipt for any updates of the payment receipt info. Okay. So same to the debit note and credit note. So the interface, the method is the same. So just press the add button, key the details, and save only. Okay. It's the same thing. So same to payment voucher. So if you're going to refund something, refund the deposit to the to the debtors, then you just key it over here. Okay. So this is the account ledger, the statement of the debtors. So we change to main, and here's the transition. Just now what we did. Okay. And here's the account outstanding. So the account outstanding statement. So if you have forgot to allocate the invoice. They were sorry forever showing here as an outstanding, and of course in the agent summary they are forever showing there as an outstanding. So as you see, this guy, this company, they are owing one zero six. There you will know, Okay. All right. So this is a current reserve part. So if nothing much, I think very less user will going to use this module. All right. So important part: account payable. Account payable. Okay, account payable. This is the function you're going to use for every day, I guess. Okay, so creditor invoice. When you receive the invoice from your supplier, your creditor, okay, you need to enter into the system. Okay, so you go to the account payable, creditor invoice, add. Okay, so you will see there's a two date over here. Date. Transactions did receive. Our system record the date is according over here. The GL date, I mean, the our system will based on this date appear in the GL. Okay, let's say the date transition is from May. Okay, this is the let's say it's the May invoice, but you receive on June. Okay. In our system, that will showing in June month. It's not going to show in the May month. Okay, make sure you enter the date correctly. Okay, that receive the transition. Okay, so I make it simple. I enter the same date, right? And credit name. So just select like your credit name, so. and otherwise your credit I create just now. See this one? Ah, oh, seventeen. So just training. Okay, they're just running. Alright, and the invoice number, the credit invoice number. And what else? Okay, expenses. So you will see the expenses is here. So you won't find any income account over here. Okay, all the six. And those I think the expenses item. Okay, these are asset and this is what unknown deposit. Ah oh, yeah. Right, so it doesn't matter. I think something wrong with the figure there. Set wrong. Right, so success training. So what's the expenses? 
Oh, oke, okay. travel expenses. Oke, okay. travel expenses and amount. Oke, okay. put the amount and save. So the GST things all oh, in all, now it's no longer there. Oke, okay. just save. Oke, okay. that's it. And payment voucher. Oke, okay. so if we going to make the payment, so we click on the payment voucher. Okay, we add, put the payment voucher date. So uh, let's say end of the month, we only make the payment. Okay, so payment for the CSS training and account is uh, from this operation bank. And giving it, chat number. And make sure you click the account location. Select and set. Okay, in the account payable, make sure your payment voucher is allocated, allocating the credit invoice accordingly. Otherwise, they will show in your aging summary. All right, so that's the things how we do the credit invoice and payment voucher. Okay. Uh, what else? Let me see. Mm. Alright, so I think that's all of this is all the thing you need to key in on the credit invoice. Huh? So just key in according to things for the creditors, the uh, I mean the, the items or the items, and that's all. Uh, oh yeah, right. So uh I, now is the SST era, so I believe some of you have must be received some SST invoice from your supplier, okay, which means the invoice that comes with the SST amount. Okay, so there is two ways to enter into the system. Okay, I'll show you the first way. Okay, I press add. So let's say it's just running SST company. Uh, okay, put back the date first. Okay, put back the date. Okay, the first method. Okay, this is the first method. So you receive the invoice. So the receive the invoice amount is let's say one ringgit is the item and SST six ringgit. So the invoice total amount is one oh six. So this is the first method. You can key in a you can key in based on the first method one oh six. Okay, just enter the total only. Okay, and set. That's that's it. Okay, but with this method. Then you are not able to know how much you have as you have spent on the SST SST amount. Okay, how you have no idea how much you already spent on the SST amount. So for those really who want to have a breakdown to record how much I really spent on the my expenses and how much I have spent on the SST. Okay, so this we're going to method two. All right, so. Uh, okay, I'm showing you. I'm going to show you the method too. So let's say, okay, hundred ringgit is the item amount. Okay, this is what I'm going to. This is what I actual expense. Huh? Okay, hundred ringgit only. And I add another item. So this should be have a SST. Where's the SST? Oh, we don't have SST. Well, let me try double check. Sales. You have sales. Uh, oh, don't have. Never mind. I'm going to create one account now. SST expenses. So it's the expenses. Do we have any SST? Okay, no, good. So we don't have any SST. So let's see. Uh, where should I park? This is a this is a the account generator function building maintenance. Okay, other fees and charges. So we have the GST expenses now. Okay, now I'm going to add one more for the SST expenses. Add SST expenses. So, uh, what is the account number? Account number is okay one five. So I go back to top, I put one six, 
All right, so it's the operation funds, and this is my expenses. Okay, and save. All right, access the expenses. Okay, now I go back to the invoice. So this is the invoice just now. Edit. Okay, now I'm talking about the second method. Okay. Andre Ingrid, this is the principal amount. I press the add item and I look for the SST expenses account. Okay, this is SST amount. So I put six ringgit and seven. All right, so if with this method, this is method two, with this method, then your financial statement, your, uh, means your financial fund statement, we're able to help you to break down the actual expenses spent on the tools, uh, I mean, on these expenses is 100 ringgit, and the expenses, is, I mean, the SST of the expenses is 6 ringgit. Uh, 6 ringgit is for the SST expenses account. Lo. Okay, so the system, the report will help you to break down the things. Lo. Okay, so basically, it's what, how you do the transition and system, how, how to give back to you. <clears throat> okay, so this is how we record the SST expenses. Lo. All right, so basically the major function is not over uh, these two only, the creditor invoice and the payment voucher. And of course, if you need to redo the location, there's a call location over here and the aging and the outstanding. Okay, so you will see there's the creditor, debit note, creditor, credit note, and debit note. So basically the meaning is uh, if you receive the credit note, or debit note from your creditor, so you just use this function only. <clears throat> okay, so remember, debit note or credit note received from your creditor doing these two functions. Okay, but however, if something wrong with the invoice and your creditor, your supplier doesn't want to issue your credit card, or maybe they're late to issue, but you're going to close your account. Okay, but impossible, you're going to uh, something like make the wrong payment and hanging your account there. So you can have an option, issue debit note to the creditor, to your supplier, debit them. Okay, so just add and credit the name and the expenses item, the amount, save. All right, that's it only. So if they return the credit note or they, they maybe they refund the money to you, so you, you can do the credit note or official receipt, and then you can allocate on the debit note. So then you will come out of your adjustment. All right, so that's it only for that part. All right, so, okay, this is the account ledger, no? the statement of the account. Okay, the statement of the account, so let's see what is it. Oh, it was, oh, so it's just running. Okay, so this is on the May, and this is the statement of account, no? plus and minus, and look at this. Okay, and this is the outstanding, no? out to the edit. So this is just now what we created. So we haven't made the payment, so they will show in the outstanding. And of course, the agent summary. Okay, put the date, submit, then you get the report. Okay. That's all. So some of the user, you might see this supplier listing. So basically, this is to update the contact info. So let's say, uh, Success training. I search. Okay, so this is the contact info. So if they have, uh, if they have uh, moved, they have relocated their office, and they send you the latest address, then you need to update in the system. So I press edit, edit contact, then you can change the address. Okay, you can change the address, then accept. Safe. Alright, so when you print out the print out any document that related for this account, they will get you the new latest 
and uh, let us let us uh, what let us import. Lah. Okay. Okay, demo voucher. Right, so any cancellation, right? So as I explained in the journal entry there, there's a delay function. Okay, any cancellation of the chat. So if someone do want to show them in the GL, there's a delete button over here. You can delete it. And oh, I'm sorry, uh, delete button over here to delete the payment voucher. Or you can pass in the journal entry to control off this payment voucher. Okay, so let's say, uh, okay, this payment voucher, active ringgit, I'm chat return. Okay, something wrong in the signature. So I copy this payment voucher number. I go to the journal entry. I just add and I just pass in the entry only. So basically it's the manual cancellation. No? This is for, okay, okay, for the operation bank. Oh. Okay, so a bit how much active? Okay, and add another item for the creditor. What the credit is just, just training. All right, copy the descriptions. Credit a hundred. Ah, oh, sorry, eighty. So. Okay, that's all. So this is the first step to cancel the this is the first step to cancel the AP payment voucher. Right. So now the next thing we need to do is we go back to payment voucher. Payment voucher. Oh, sorry, go back to the payment voucher there. Open the document number. So let's say this is the one. I edit and save. Okay. Make sure the system has reversed the allocation. Okay, make sure the system reverse the allocation. Yeah? Make sure you edit and set. Let the system auto reverse it. Okay, once the reverse allocation done, go to account allocation, find the PV. So PV40. This is the one. Select and put on the PV date. This is a uh, What's the date? You read it. Okay, then the eight of May. Select for the date and next and allocate the JV. This is the cancel JV. Okay, select select All right allocated AP and save done. This is how we cancel the check. So when we look at the payment voucher, so it's located the check mount, the cancellation check. So how is presented in your bank recon? Okay, let us have a look. This is for the NBB for the May, and this is the June, All right? So okay, we go to the bank recon. This is MBB bank operation, uh, MBB operations, January. Okay, so now why we go and add one more for the June. Uh, maybe we add two, uh, one for the May and one for the June. So, for example, let's see that at All right, so let's see in the May. So in the May, your payment voucher is still there. Okay, so please remember your JV, your journal entry cancellation date is on June. So of course, there's not going to show here. And of course, I don't think you will go and reconcile with that because it's bound check. It's not going to show in your bank record, I mean your bank statement. So you will leave it blank over here. Okay, so what you do is go to the June. Right, so you will see this memory voucher and this JV. Okay, edit. So if it's not really so, if have, I mean, I mean, if the transaction is not 
not even showing in your bank statement so you can take skip oh. okay because there is never in, in your, never go into your bank statement there so your bank statement never appear this unless someone go and bank in the check okay your system already have the record okay your system already have the record in june there's an in but then after that there's a out there's a i mean there's a credit oh, sorry sorry there's a debit there's a bounce check issue on third june so you enter this transition to contract out okay so if that's the thing if that's the case your bank statement showing in and out then you can take the reconcile okay reconcile okay i'm talking about if if that's the case uh, if your bank statement has showing the in and out okay then you can take the recon but if really nothing happened in your may and your june statement is never appear there so you can just take skip only okay just take the skip only and set that's it that's all only all right so uh, what else uh? account payable i think that's all for the account payable so the major function is the creditor invoice and the payment function okay okay so for the next function is our uh, financial statement <clears throat> so we talk about the financial statement okay so uh, basically the the standard as a standard uh, we have the trial balance balance sheet cash flow and the management fund statement which means your p and l i guess one second all right so okay trial balance so basically is just select how you want the report how does how you want the system to present the report to so they have been laid out, you want a single period or a single walk to. So I we try the single period first. And the period month is maybe up to uh, okay, this 2020 May and submit. So they will give you the report up to 2020 May. <coughs> Alright, they'll give you the report up to 2020 May for these all the things uh, debit and credit okay so basically just submit and you'll get a report okay same in the balance sheet okay same in the balance sheet you can select okay select how you want to present uh it's a year quarter or the financial year and statement layout so walk through comparison or the period begin i mean the single period so if single period, if I put May, I submit. So I will get that I will get the things up. Okay, so should be tell you plus and minus. Six five six six five six two zero. That's all. So basically just select the period and submit only for the report part. Okay. And there's some additional function here allow account zooming so if we take this we submit again you will see the amount turn into the blue color and you can click on it okay the blue color amount you <coughs> you can click on the blue color amount so when you click you will know the system how they calculate this item so you will know oh it's from the jv dated on this date so maybe you can see whether it's correct or not okay to rectify the problem Right, so basically all the amount you can click on. Okay. <clears throat> That's all. Okay, so same to the cash flow. They will need you to select uh, which bank account you want to see the cash flow and select the period months. Uh, let's say June, or oh, sorry, May. Uh, maybe I need the May collection only. I want the May report only. So I select the period month, May, submit. So this is all the things. Huh? So render, I think this is the render I key in just now. Uh -huh, yep, yeah, this is the render I key in just now. Okay, what else? 800, this is, uh, what is this? Oh, under there was it. 
And just now, CSS training, this is what? Refund, oh no, this is not refund, this is the out, the payment. Okay, a payment for this creditor. So then you get a net profit of 1006. Okay, plus and minus, and you have a balance, 1006 income profit. Okay, in May month, in the May month. Okay, so basically uh, the same thing, uh, submit and you get a report. And of course you can go to print. Uh. Okay, there's a print button, print button over here. Same to the balance sheet, print, and uh, of course the brown balance, there's a print button over here. Okay, okay, now come to the mention fund statement. So uh, basically it's the same thing, just select the month and submit. So all the in and out will show you over here. Okay, that's all only. Okay, and uh, this is something like the, okay, this period transaction analysis is something like breakdown versions of the balance sheet or maybe something else like the GL listing. Okay, so you can play around, doesn't matter. Uh, let's say I want to check why I need to check SST. Uh, oh, SST. SST expenses uh, submit. So up to June, there's this account. So, hmm, correct, because I'm doing that one. So if, let's say period month, period work through from January and June, submit. So we only appear in May. Yeah, correct. That's now enter the invoice, the SST amount in the May invoice. All right. So that's it. So uh, <coughs> another kind of the another kind of the searching something like that. All right. So this is for our financial statement. Okay. And the rest will be the budget and the first asset. Okay, budget and the first assets. And I think, okay, is it financial year budget? Okay, uh, we take a five minute break. So we continue on, we continue on what time? 12, 17. No? Okay, we take a five minute break and we continue on cloud 17. Okay.
Uh, all right, so we start on 12.20. Maybe someone is not back yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'll continue. All right, financial year budget. Okay, so financial year budget is uh I think is only the administrator level or maybe the manager level in the book how they can assess this. Okay, so we have two budget over here. This is the financial year budget, so which can compare with your the management statement. Uh, sorry, the financial year, the financial year budget, which can compare to your financial statement, like the management fund statement there. Okay. And another budget we're talking about is this budget. Okay, there's a budget planning, survey charge budget, singing one schedule. So this budget is for your property management user. So which means they'll come, it means your your guys will need to enter the, the, the budget things and, and and then the survey charge report. And the survey charge report will come out the okay, let's say the proposal. Okay, we put this and submit. So Let's say if you enter the things everything correctly, everything in order, and our system will able to help you to calculate how much per square feet you should charge for next year for the survey charges. Okay. So let's say there's some big over here. Lah. So plus and minus, then you will get ah uh, yeah, distribute by fill up uh, over here. <clears throat> whether your management is whether whether the management office uh, sorry, the management the buildings it depends on the fill ups or the share unit okay so that's just just change accordingly and they will come out the report like this fifty nine thousand so so the total bill up should be have uh, this figure and okay. and maybe I put another sample nothing here. Oh, still nothing. Proposal, yes, proposal. Try submit. Yep, something come up. So this is a 2019 budget, and the actual things you gain is this, and the variance is this. So they will give you the two year 2020 budget over there. And then they will come up at the end. So they will come up to show you how much service charges per bill you should charge in your property management. Recording is hanging what okay. <clears throat> okay, so they will come out the, the proposal for you lah, the survey charge, how much you're supposed to charge on next year or how is it. Okay, so just enter accordingly in the budget planning. So for example, this is it. Or oh, no result. Uh, but never mind, just enter accordingly the things. Okay, all the incomes and the expenses. Okay, the budget, and you click the end. Uh, I mean, you click the click the what? Uh, come on, the social budget. You come on the report. If the budget is confirmed and approved by approved from the committee member, the table, then you can enforce your budget. So once you enforce, then nothing can be changed. Huh? Okay, so uh, the same thing. If really need to change, then just 
log an email to technician. No? All right, so same for the seeking fund schedule. Uh, the special thing is uh, seeking fund expenditure items over here. So this is all the items and life spans also, which means every 10 years you have to replace the, the what is it, the pending. Uh, every 10 years you have to replace the pending and it costs 90k. Okay, so you key in everything accordingly. And the syncing part will give you the same report. So plus and minus, calculate the things. Ideal syncing form per square feet. So, oh, it's nothing. You have over collected. Okay. So, <clears throat> should be have something like if according now the, our current uh, actual settings. Okay, should be have something. Like, right, so don't worry about that. Just keep according only and you'll get the result. All right, so now we go back to the setup. Financial year budget. Okay, so this is the budget we use in the financial statement. The what? Okay, this mention fund statement. All right, how we use this? Uh, let's say year 2020. This is a uh, which financial year? Let me see. Financial year 2020. Ah, uh, this one. Wrong description. Okay, year 2021 and. Maybe we do for this. Uh, I think we have some record over here. Okay, year 2020. Uh, where is it? Oh, year budget. Year 2020. Yep, there's some result we already keyed in previously. Okay, so how to enter the amount is we always press on the edit. Okay, if you want to modify something, press the edit button. Okay, edit button, then uh, let's say uh, I have to select some account numbers. Uh, maintenance fee, subscribe, message, and charge. Okay, let's say car park charges. There's some, your management is rendered out some car park. So let's say uh, roughly every month we receive 500. Okay, every month we receive 500. So I just feel now. Okay, I press the fill now and system will help me to fill up all the month. Okay, because I enter it's from January until June only. So there's six month period only. Okay, it's according your financial year setting because this financial year I select is only for six months. All right, so that's it. And then click calculate. Once you complete everything, that means I mean complete everything, then click calculate. Then the system will calculate the total. Okay, total. So if let's say there's a special adjustment in certain months, so you just go in, change the figure only. Okay, you can change the figure and press calculate again. So the total amount will be updated. All right, so that's all. Then make sure you save the things. Okay, save. All right. So now, how to view, how to have a comparison for our financial year budget? Okay, we go to the financial statements, management fund statement, to the hand scale. Let's say uh, financial year lah. I want to compare the the whole year statement layout budget comparison okay budget comparison and it's compared up to maybe may no? oh. okay june no? never mind june then submit Right, so this is all. Uh, this is the figure up to the twenty twenty June, and this is the budget I enter in the in the financial year budget. All right, so let's see. Uh, as you see, 
the car park charges is 37,000 uh, whereas this so if compared to our system uh, so sorry compared to the actual so we have lost 98 percent for the from the for the what car park charges so i believe at the end they will show the total uh -huh, total loss or something uh yeah all right so that's it this is our the financial year budget lah, and the budget comparison to your management fund statement. <coughs> okay, that's all. Day. Okay, so the last part will be the fixed asset. Okay, last part will be the fixed asset. Right, so uh, to use the fixed asset, we must have uh, some asset register over here. Lah. Then our system only can process the process the depreciation for you. Okay, asset registration. We have to press the add and register the. Oh, I can't see the words. Okay, we have to register the information. Huh? So, uh, for example, okay, so if we motor, this is what we did before. So we press the edit button. And the category. Security motor, or maybe you have to, you have an option to add in more category over here. So just press on this button, then you can add in more category, lah. Okay. And put the item name, your asset item name, serial number, supplier. Just put according everything. Okay, that purchase, the purchase price, the real value, uh, the warranty, the license, uh, the expenses account, depreciation account. Okay. And the depreciation formula. We have two formula over here. So the straight line and the double declining balance. So of course the double declining balance is uh, so I think it's a very complicated formula there. So I'm not really sure how the formula works. Just Google search the formula and you understand the formula. Okay, but go for the symbol for the straight line. Uh. Okay. And actually this is the depreciation date. Actually, this is the date field. Let me say I copy. Yep, this is the depreciation date. Uh, maybe we didn't control on the on the spacing things up. Uh, might we will we will, <coughs> we will fix all this. Okay, so this is the depreciation date. So if let's say there's some asset bring forward from the previous system, you want to continue in our system, so you can register all the things and previous. Depreciation date in the previous system is let's say it's up to the 31st March already. Okay, the previous system already done up to March. So the next depreciation in our system we're going to for April. Okay, we're going for April. So previous depreciation date 31st March. Then our system will know ah oh, this security motor we are going to start from the April. Okay. So that's it. Just put in the date accordingly and start with the opening balance. So if the opening value last, let's say the March depreciation has done until let's say 1006, right? Then just put 1006, so the opening value, the balance, I mean. Okay, and the commitments date, start from this. The balance month, so how many months? They are going to end up. So let's say there's five, there's uh, maybe 12 four months to end up the balance. And save. 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 Okay, that's it. That's all the things. Then go to depreciation processing over here. All right, so let's say try the April, the third April. So you see the security motor, the usual one, start from the opening balance, 1006 and 7500, lifespan, that's 12 more months, and the previous depreciation is this, and for the April month depreciation will be 9167 cents. Okay, so that's it, this is the record, and press post to account, and system will process this depreciation and post into the individual account there okay let's try one yeah i don't think we do i think we're going to try for reserve this for the next 
next demonstration now. Okay, so once you press the post the account, the account, the transition will post into the the, the, the over here. Uh, yeah, over here. So the transition post to respective account, we will change these two account. Okay, so and then we have a status report over here. Okay, status report and put the date you want to check and you will see the record over here. Okay, so is this uh, all right? So that's all. Only. This is the depreciation, this is the fixed asset functions. Uh. All right, so uh, that's all is for our financial, financial accounting. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about a bit from the property management, which is which has related to the financial accounting. Okay, so all right, chart of account. <clears throat> right, SST will go for the letter lah because there's actually nothing to do, nothing much to do in the SST. But our system will do everything for you. Okay, later I'll show you the presentations. So we talk about the, the important thing first. Okay, chart of account. So once you complete all your chart of account, and then in the property management, okay, property management, the GL code, okay. Uh, don't worry about the don't worry about the explanations. Uh, tomorrow we will have uh, another session for this. Okay, the GL code. So you will see each of the GL code that has the debit account number and credit account number. So which has linked to the financial accounting there. Okay. So which means when you're going to post the transaction from the product management to your financial accounting, system will base on this setting and debit and credit this account number. So which means when you post the financial accounting, system will base on this setting, <coughs> CNAC, they will debit to access card and credit to Debtor account management fund. Okay, so if let's say there is some new charges code requirement from your property management, <clears throat> so the finance side maybe have uh, need to assist to create a new account number or maybe guide, maybe advise them where, where should that part in the in the which account number. Okay, so this have to work with your 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 front desk side and uh, the back end side lah. Okay, so to prevent the account number post to the wrong account. Okay, so make sure both the party works together and get the things done. Okay, before post to the account. Okay, so as you see, some of the account number, for example, some of the account number is still blank. Okay, so the account, the account site need to assist them to set up the account number. Let's say this is debit to anywhere else and this is credit to the debt account, something like that. Okay, so the finance side need to assist them to set up the account number. Lah. All right, so this is the one part. So to set up the account number. So once you set up everything, and this is the function you post to general ledger. In the transition processing, there's a post to general ledger. Okay, very straightforward name, post to general ledger. And this function, they will find all the unposted transition in your property management. Okay, so you must post, you must post for the first month. Okay, they will find out all the unposted transition. Then you just click on the post now. Only. That's all. Only. Nothing need to do. Okay, unless you hit some error. Let me see whether I can find some error come up. Ah oh, yeah, over here. This error message happen very often. This message come out because the account number they didn't set up the in the jail code there. Okay, so we just press on the view error lock. And you will see ah the problem is from this UV SST. They didn't have the account number there. So that's why the system not allow you to post. <coughs> okay. So you must set up the account number in the UV SSD 
then you only solve this problem. Then you can continue post the GL. Right? So the details maybe tomorrow we will continue on this. Okay, I just roughly go through on this part. All right, so there's a just now there's a question about the SSD. Right, SSD. So if someone is handle the SSD project, so you will see this function in the financial guarding SSD. Okay, SSD. So uh, basically nothing else you need to touch now. So you just go to the SST written form. Okay, SST written form and period ending, you just go to SST period to add in your financial uh, add in your SST submission period. Uh. So this is the for example, this is a period uh, first April until the day first May. Okay, you add on the period and you put a description, you save your asset. And system will help you automatically get all the things come out. Okay, so the total amount and the total allocated, allocated amount. Okay, and this is the things. Okay, so a lot of the user they have confused on the GST and the SSC things. Okay, as what we know is, as you know, I'm sorry, as what we know is, GST is GST amount is according to the invoice amount. Okay, so it's very straightforward. How much you bill, you times, you get the 6% and that's the amount you're going to pay to the customer there. But SST will come out a lot of the problem here. SST is according your collection. So it's not according your billing. So some of the user, they're still confused on this part. They thought the SST submission amount is according the invoice amount. So it's not, which is wrong. So it's according to our collection amount. So if we build up, let's say uh, the service charge, uh, we don't talk about service charge, the rental, the commercial building, the rental fee. Okay, the rental which has the SST amount, 6%. So we make it simple. 100 ringgit rental, so you will get 6 ringgit SST. All right, so when, Coming to the submission one, if the rental fee is not paid by the, it's not paying by the, that means it still remain outstanding, okay, remain outstanding. SST return form will not, they will not going to capture that because it's not settled yet, right? So unless there's a payment coming in and pay for the invoice, then the system only able to get the invoice over here, okay? But uh, one thing is our SST return form with, which will calculate very accurately. <coughs> I mean, very accuracy on the accurate on the SST amount. So it's not only six percent of the invoice. Okay, it's actually they were according to your allocation amount. So uh, the behind the formula is a bit complicated for you guys, uh, but never mind. Just remember that SST submission amount is based on your allocation amount. How much you allocate on the invoice, then how then the system will calculate based on that. Okay, so you can click on the amount and sorry, you can click on the either one to see the details how the system calculate the SSD come out. I mean the yeah, return amount. How the system calculate the return amount. Okay, so as you can see, this is the invoice number and this is the payment info. Lah. This is uh, the receipt number. Lah. Okay, item amount 10 ringgit. So which means the water bill amount is 10 ringgit. SST rate 6. Payment period, this is the allocation. Okay. This is the allocation during this May submission. So it's, so it's five ringgit. So of course, the 6% will be based on the five ringgit. So you will get 30 cents. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the SSD form. Okay, SSD form. So, this, you click on the button, then you know how you how the system calculate the things up. 
okay? And the tax deduction from credit note or contract tax system automatically get from you, if it's just from the credit note. This is what SD adjustment, or this is the SSD adjustment. So usually this will come from the credit note, okay? Wow, too many tax. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, credit note. And this is the total tax before penalty. So which means this and this plus and minus, you get this and plus your penalty rate. So this penalty rate system will calculate according to the custom, the, as the custom formula. Lah. So if you overdue for the first 30 days, they will have a 10% and the next 30 days, they will add up to 15%. So we are doing the same formula. Okay, so this formula is according to the date submission that you put. Okay, so let's say this is the May. So you will have a one month period to submit your SSD. So which means the whole June month is your submission period, submission date. So if you put until July, so the system will calculate the interest amount. So yeah, 30 cent, uh, 90, 90 it should both have oh this is negative amount negative also which means i don't need to pay so that way no credit <coughs> no penalty amount so let's say there's a you late for one month so the 10 percent will be imposed according this and it will calculate the 10 percent over here then you just based on this amount and submit to the sst ssc website <clears throat> right so uh sometimes there's a uh, special case happen sometimes the you when the user submit to the custom website the sst amount is different from the custom website okay so as i as, as i explained to you our system is calculate according the item that you allocated okay but the custom website is calculate according this figure which means the total invoice amount. Okay, they didn't calculate individual item SST amount, but ours will calculate individual ID. I I mean the individual SST item amount. So this is the reason they cause some difference between the custom side and our system. So it doesn't matter. What you need to do is you need to make sure the custom site amount is same with our system okay make sure your custom website the my sst website the payment figure the payable figure is same as our system then you are safe okay that's all only then you can submit your sst all right so that's all about the sst part though. So I think the financial is up to this only. So tomorrow we will have the property management training. So the details we will update from the WhatsApp also. Lah. So uh, I will send a message later on. And remember if the if someone write the questions in the in a notepad there, so remember forward to me lah, my email address. Okay. So again, my email address is this. So remember, forward your any question or FAQ to forward uh, to this email address. All right. <clears throat> and for oh, now, let me see uh, the number, the email. Ah, yeah. We I have a I have a record the I record the training session of this training sessions. So if anyone need to get the get the video, so you just drop an email to me. Lo. I will forward the email, I will forward the the, 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 uh, the video to you. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I think is that's all. So if any questions, so you can always email to me. Lo. Okay, oh, feed out. Okay, I will send the video to you. Lo. So if someone else needs the video, so just drop me an email. Okay, I will forward the video to you. All right. Okay. Thank, thanks for your time. So we we'll see you on tomorrow. Oh, this is Jenny. Okay. All right. 
Okay, see you guys tomorrow. Stop. Stop.